All right, welcome back. Okay, we'll be joined this time around by Chibuzo Mbakwe, who is a motivational speaker. He is a musician and also a youth counselor. Welcome, Chips, to the table. Okay, we we'll still have Betty Abba, Felix Obanya, and of course, Mr. Shoyebi Samson is back again. All right, so let's talk about the Nigerian youth quickly in 10 minutes. Uh, looking at where we are now, where all of the money is, uh, well, I don't think Ghana must go is trending anymore, but uh, <laughs> the money is flying out somehow, somehow. The Commonwealth is being squandered by our supposed leaders, you know, according to all national and international reports. Where does the youth of Nigeria actually come in in all of this? And what provision do you think you know, is on ground for them? Let me start with you, Mr. Shui. Mm. <laughs> well, I think the Nigerian youth presently, we are so disconnected from the realities on ground. Mm. We don't even know what happens, what's happening in our society as of now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what plans the government has, has for us. Mm -hmm. Even though they talk about it, I was reading through the uh, president's speech earlier, and he was talking about his plan to spend 500 billion, you know, that has been, they've been spending for the past one year, and all, they're still spending it. But unfortunately, it's not even the money that we, are talk we the youths, are talking about. We want to have a clear map of how you, what, what, what plans you have concerning our future. You, you, you understand? If, if you talk about uh, you are training people in Mampa, what is the, what is, what job? Is available for these people to be doing. I'm a trainer of you know construction trade in, uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. Now, the one of the challenges we've always been having is where do we put these people to work? When you train them, where will they gain the practical experience to work? Which construction activities is going on that they will, they will get engaged in? So it, it's not just about you saying talk, doing a lot of talks. Mm -hmm. We need to see you doing things. I looked at the cabinet. Now the president actually consulted some 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 months back. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see any youth, you know, that can refer to it as a youth that's going to bring in innovation mm -hmm. or creativity. We are look, looking at moving with the trend. I think the youth constitute about more than fifty percent of the entire population. Sixty-five percent, you know, you know, and if these youths are the majority of the society, they understand the trend, they understand the beats, the spirit of the of the society. You are supposed to bring them into your photo actually get to understand what do they want. Okay. But I don't see that happening at all. So you see that disconnect in what our leadership is doing vis a vis what we the youth actually desire. All right, Mr. Obaya, in 20 seconds, in your own opinion, what's the greatest challenge bedeviling the Nigerian youth? The biggest challenge is that those who are the elders are the most selfish groupings that mm. nature has ever known. Mm. Most of those guys who ran this nation, ran them, this nation in their 20s and in their 30s. M. Tumbu was 23 or thereabouts. I mean, I mean was of about that age. They were all young people who were, who were in, the, in the forefront of things. As the people were in their 30s. Uh, all, so those who are there now, who are elders, either because they are lethargic or they do not have any other, other means that to suck from the economy till they die, are not creating room for this people to come. For example, go to the civil service. So many directors, so many assistant directors, probably doing virtually the same thing. If one director is moved, he can place his jobs. Mm -hmm. It's coming. We need to be creative. Now we are talking about empowering people, young people who have no ideas, who just left school, and you think that they should be entrepreneurs. What happened to the men in their forties and fifties who are in the ministries who have been there for twenty years? Can't you give them a golden handshake and push on them outside okay. and give them some money to start businesses? All right. They have more ideas mm -hmm. and more experience than these young people. They are asked to experiment. They are patient. If you were in your 20s and somebody gave you five million, how do you spend it? Mm -hmm. With no responsibility? We've got to be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to push some of these oldies mm -hmm. who also belong to our third generation <laughs> to, to move away <laughs> and sit through our children. children. Okay. That's the truth. All right, let me Quickly. <laughs> First and foremost, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, and happy Independence Day. So, from what Mr. Shoebi was saying, it, lo it looks like um, he's it sounds like as if the youths have given up on themselves. Mm. Because you know what I want to say is that they don't have to. Because if they give up on themselves, they're giving up on their country and they're giving up on those that believed in them. 
So you are a Nigerian youth that still has a lot of hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, okay. I, I believe. See, I I told you when we computerize things, there are many things you should go and look into doing. Okay. Like in Oyo State, there's this AR in artificial intelligence scanner that can actually um, um detect fake drugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so many things. What about the Okanari youths when I came here the last time? I told you they're actually taking up, seizing the future themselves, going out there to employ their fellow youths, giving them uh, agricultural farmlands to, to plant. So these are some of the things I think um, youths are doing. Remember I also said that um, the late John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. So we've been blaming the government and doing things. We've been blaming. It's all blame game. But remember, we're not making anywhere. We're not, we're not getting anywhere with all these blames. So why not? We're all, all doing the talking, but not walking the walk. They said, talk less and walk more. Mm. So we're doing the talking, but we're not walking. We're not doing the walking. So in your opinion, mm. the Nigerian youth themselves yeah. you know, need to do something Do something because, for themselves. Because, you know, we, we need to see, it's our own country. So we come here and do things. <laughs> when you see, there's division of labor. You're in this sector. You're in agriculture. You're an engineer. You're, you're, you're a doctor. You can invent things. When you invent things in different sectors, together we build up. You know, so that's how the, you remember, and also the divides we are having in this country is not helping matters. You know, I can understand there's ethnic divide, there's political divide, and there's religious divide. Yeah. But I believe um, Rome was not built in a day. Remember, they say it takes 21 years to to get to 21 years old, mm. and it takes an average of 50 years mm. to culture a full-blown gray hair. Mm. And our democracy is like 20 years old or something. Okay. That's since 1999. So we, we, I know we have to start from somewhere, but okay, we, let me come in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I think that we should not uh, pass the blame game on the youths. The system has to work. There has to be a plan. There has to be a national plan of action on how we're going to empower our youth. We have a responsibility to the younger generation to develop them, to invest in their development. If you go to other countries, they have all kinds of scholarship, scholarship aids, all kinds of skills empowerment. Mm -hmm. We have to do that, not just on paper, but to make it work. I, I'm very, very sure, I don't have the statistics, but I'm very sure that Nigerian youths are the most migrant groups in the world. Many of the people that die in the Sahara Desert trying to get um, Nigerians, Nigerians mm -hmm. in the Mediterranean Sea are Nigerians. Mm -hmm. We should be worried. Mm -hmm. Those people that are, being, are coming back from South Africa, from Libya, is because there's no the, the, the envir enabling environment for them. That's why they are moving out. And where we, we, we put a focus, like a conscious focus on developing our youth, not just uh, uh, declaring a national uh, plan of action, but ensuring that young people have a future to look up to. Young people feel a sense of entitlement. Young people have a sense of, um, that, I mean, the, that the government is responsible for them. Because sense of I work with young inclusion. people in some of the most impoverished communities, and there are so many talents. People that we can tap into, people that are going to be asset to this country. But we must invest in their development. We we'll have to show interest in them. Well said. You have Remember, just to buttress what you were saying. <laughs> Remember, there was a guy that invented a gen that runs on water. Mm. That's what we want our youth to be doing. Because with all this invention, he can even sell the company to, to the invest. West. Wait, wait, he can sell it to the West. And, <laughs> and it involves capital. It has can I join Can I join Okay, okay. Let's have more time. Let me start by your talk. Thank you for watching the show today. It's an ongoing discussion. All of our social media platforms are open and let's keep the conversation going. Many thanks to all our guests for coming out today. Chief Zomba, thank you. Betty Abba, thank you, Felix Obanya. Show you this house in anything, sir. Thank you to Adem Kola Oluwoyeye and also to Mazi Chinedu of your heart. Thank you, viewers, for uh, contributing to the program today. Well, for Nigeria to develop, there must be conscious effort at nation building, and True. we need to build a society based on merit. I'll leave you this afternoon with a, mo a motivational spe uh, speech or something by Chibuzo, all right, for the independence. We'll see you tomorrow on The Boss. Have yourself a good day and happy independence again. Today's lesson, the good, the bad, the ugly. There is a saying, the truth is kept secret and swept under the rock. But I'm here to blow the whistle, haven't wet for so long. 
Now here's a piece of the good side. You heard about the guy that invented the world fastest computer? He was Nigerian. You heard about the team that won the Olympic gold medal in 1996? They were Nigerians. Recently, you heard about the Berlin girls that did a country proud in a tech competition in California. They were Nigerians. Now here's a peek on the back side. For the Louis Lisa Patriots, please don't get mad at me. For us to make tremendous progress for the future, we need to tackle the lapses from death to surface. Now you heard about the story of the pastor in Kenya who sucks women's breasts. One of the guys was sucking out problem. He was Nigerian. Now you heard about the story of the guys who partook in the fake racist attack on an American actor. They were Nigerians. Now you heard about the woman in Canada that was cheating the Canadian government and swearing at the public by begging for arms on the street. She was Nigerian. This is just a patient of the park.